Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Indie Alaska is an innovative weekly web series capturing the diverse and colorful lifestyle of Alaskans. Real stories of everyday Alaskans at work and play. Supported in part by Alaska Pipeline Service Company. The National Weather Service. Good evening, welcome to Alaska Weather. I'm Sam Albanese from the National Weather Service. And to get started, we'll take a look at our uh, hazards around the state tonight. Uh, basically, right along the North Gulf Coast here, we are expecting up to about 12 inches of snow through tomorrow afternoon in that Yakutat area. So uh, significant snowfall occurring there. Also, as we move on to the northern portions of the state, along the uh, Alaska Range, basically on the north slopes of the Alaska Range, and also portions of the upper Tanana Valley there. Um, expect wind chills uh, predominantly at the higher elevations, ridgetop type stuff, uh, to about 50 below through tomorrow morning. Same thing as we move on over towards the Eastern Brooks Range, wind chills to 50 below along the uh, ridgetop uh, in uh, some chilly conditions there. And then over the Seward Peninsula and the interior portions of the Seward Peninsula, uh, also expecting wind chills to about 50 below. And that'll be till about uh, 9 p.m. this evening the areas in the eastern part of the state that's all going to go through tomorrow morning taking a look now at our satellite imagery over the north pacific and we can see what's going on out there we have uh, an old frontal system the main low is south uh, southwest of shemya and this is bringing up some uh, warmer conditions although uh, we have been experiencing some uh, heavier snowfall with reduced visibilities and blowing snow in both on Alaska and up towards the uh, Pribilof Islands the, uh, this evening. We are anticipating conditions to warm up and the snow to let up and that will uh, uh, help alleviate those conditions. But you can kind of see how this, this system is moving on into the uh, central and eastern Bering Sea and that's bringing a lot of clouds over that region. Now as we change our focus over to the state of Alaska, our GO satellite imagery, the majority of the state, as you can see, is generally pretty clear. We have this moisture that came on up towards basically the bullseye of the Akitat, hence why we have that uh, snow advisory out through tomorrow afternoon. Um, and also into the eastern Copper River Basin, there was uh, reports of snowfall there. The uh, headwaters of the Tanana Valley in the eastern interior saw uh, snow falling throughout the day as well. Clearer conditions over the south central region, as you can see in the satellite loop, and we'll put this in motion again generally clear cold conditions throughout much of the interior portion of the state although there were some clouds over the uh, northern uh, north coast uh, up along the arctic coast so here's the low pressure systems in the north gulf coast this is what's fueling the uh, snowfall along the north gulf coast and portions of the, uh, the northern panhandle the, the majority of the panhandle soar saw showery type conditions today snow in that eastern copper basin as i had talked about and also snow right on up along the uh, uh, Alcan border to the Eastern Brooks Range. Clear, cooler conditions throughout the, the majority of the mainland up along the Arctic coast, even though there's high pressure up there, there were some clouds over the central Arctic coast. Here's our system that's uh, affecting the Aleutian Islands. Snow with blowing snow in the Pribilof Islands, also in the uh, Dutch Harbor area on Alaska. Snow with blowing snow, uh, sometimes mixed with rain, but generally they, they did report about four inches of snow there uh, earlier this uh, afternoon. Taking a look at the forecast for tonight, low along the North Gulf Coast is going to continue to keep that snow falling heavy at times over the Yakutat area and that North Gulf Coast. Expect snow showers up into the uh, northern, northeastern portions of Prince William Sound as well as into the Cordova area, up into Thompson Pass, the eastern Copper River Basin. Some snow can also be expected into the upper Yukon Valley and the eastern portions of the Tanana Valley with this uh, system here. Uh, southeast Alaska, generally snow showers are what you should expect throughout the majority of the panhandle. Over the uh, south central region, Cook Inlet region, we still continue to see those strong outflow type winds, gusty cold conditions, uh, especially al along Cook Inlet. Uh, although we don't have any wind chill advisories, pretty low wind chills for this neck of the woods. Kodiak Island, 
generally right on the cusp of where the clouds are at. And then as we move on over towards the Bering Sea again, low pressure over the central Bering Sea, that occlusion is dissipating, but we do have another low pressure system coming up south of the uh, chain. This will continue to push the warmer air up, but uh, along the Alaska Peninsula, expect snowfall. An inch or two is really what you should only expect there. The snow over the uh, eastern Aleutian Islands, central Aleutian Islands becomes mixed with rain and more showery as the evening progresses and the overnight hours and mixed rain and snow showers uh, out along the uh, remainder of the Aleutian Islands. And also in the Pribloff Islands, St. Paul, St. George, snow with blowing snow, reducing visibilities, generally below a mile uh, frequently tonight. Not expecting blizzard conditions there, but it's going to be close. For Saturday, this low is still along the North Gulf Coast. The snow in the uh, Yakutat area and that region will become more showery and start to let up by the afternoon. Some snow showers an inch or two up into the Chilkoot White Path area, maybe as much as four inches as you get a little bit higher up. Some mixed rain and snow showers are possible in southeast Alaska. The snow in the eastern Copper River Basin should be letting up, cloudy conditions otherwise. Cloudy conditions over that eastern interior, the, the headwaters of the uh, upper Yukon Valley region. Clearing conditions up along the Arctic coast and the Brooks Range. Clear cold conditions persisting over the western half of the state. And as we see our system continuing to impact the eastern Aleutian Islands to the Alaska Peninsula, as the warmer air comes into the picture throughout the day tomorrow, mixed rain and snow and over the Alaska Peninsula, don't be surprised if it changes to all rain by late in the afternoon. The uh, eastern Aleutian Islands probably going to keep a mixture of rain and snow throughout the day and then mixed rain and snow showers as you move on out into the central Aleutian Islands. And the Pribloff Islands will still see some snow falling there with the windy conditions blowing snow reducing your visibilities there uh, generally below a mile at times. Taking a look now at the forecast for Sunday as we look at southeast Alaska they're not going to be uh, too bad generally some cloudy conditions, not much in the way of precipitation. Now, the windier conditions will be pushing in late in the day Sunday as this frontal system moves across the Gulf. Along the North Gulf Coast to Kodiak Island, rain and snow mixed along the North Gulf Coast. Some snow as you move on up into the northern and, and uh, western portions of Prince William Sound. Uh, we expect the Cook Inlet side of the Chugach Mountains to uh, kind of be rain shadowed out or snow shadowed out. So there's a hole there, but along the Alaska Range, up in the Susitna Valley, expect snow there as well as along the Alaska Range and the Copper River Basin. Down towards southwestern Alaska, here's this main low pressure system uh, on the strong side at 970 millibars. Rain and snow mixed in Kodiak Island changing to all, to all rain. The Alaska Peninsula expect a mixture of rain and snow. Snow on the north side of the peninsula, mixed rain and snow on the south side. And as the day progresses, Pretty much all rain on the south side with a mixture of rain and snow on the north side. Rain and snow mixed over the eastern Aleutian Islands. And as you continue on out along the Aleutian Islands, a mixture of rain and snow showers are what you should expect there. Up into the interior, basically north of the Alaska Range, clear conditions are going to persist until we get on over towards the Cuscombe Delta where there will be some clouds spreading over associated with this low pressure system. And expect to see some clouds increase along the Arctic coast during the day Sunday, may even see some flurries or fog. Taking a look now at our temperatures around the state. Southeast Alaska, 30s and 40s are what prevailed there. As you move on up towards the nor North Gulf Coast, 20s to low 30s, teens and low 20s over the Cook Inlet region and Kenai Peninsula. Single digits above and below zero in that Copper River Basin as well as uh, as we move on north of the Alaska Range, pretty much everything was staying below zero to the minus teens. Up along the Brooks Range, temperatures minus teens and minus 20s. And at the Arctic Coast, minus 20s and minus 30s are what we were seeing there. Over the Seward Peninsula, generally on the north side, the, the Cotsview Sound side, right, minus teens. And then Norton Sound side, uh, negative single digits below zero. Single digits below zero as you come down into the Yukon and Cuscum Delta. Cold conditions persi uh, persisting as well in that Bristol Bay region, uh, basically single digits to, uh, in, to the teens. 20s along the Alaska Peninsula, low 30s in the eastern Aleutian Islands as well as the Pribloff Islands, and temperatures into the upper 30s as you continue on out along the Aleutian Islands. Taking a look at our low temperature forecast for tonight. Southeast Alaska expected temperatures to generally be in the 30s, low 20s as you move on up towards Yakutat. 
teens and single digits above and below zero as we get over the south central region. Minus teens to minus 20s as we move on into that eastern interior region. Minus 20s and minus 30s up to the Brooks Range and the Arctic coast. Minus teens and minus 20s over the Seward Peninsula. Minus teens and minus 20s as we get on over to the Yukon Cuscombe Delta. Single digits below zero over the Bristol Bay region teens and 20s along the Alaska Peninsula, as well as uh, tw mid 20s in the Pribilof Islands, and generally in the 30s along the Aleutian Islands for your lows tonight. For our highs tomorrow, expect Southeast Alaska to see your temperatures generally in the mid to upper 30s there, teens to mid 20s along the North Gulf Coast, uh, single digits into the Copper River Basin, staying below zero basically north of the Alaska Range, minus teens up to the uh, Brooks Range, and minus teens and minus 20s along the Arctic Coast staying below zero over the Yukon Cuscombe Delta, only getting up to the around 10 to 15 in Bristol Bay in the 30s along the Alaska Peninsula. 41 is what you can expect over that Dutch Harbor area in the upper 20s in the Pribilof Islands and the mid to upper 30s along the Aleutian Islands. Taking a look now at our flying weather for tomorrow, marginal conditions uh, scattered throughout southeast Alaska, definitely marginal conditions in the northern panhandle with marginal to IFR conditions becoming marginal in the afternoon along, along that north Gulf Coast. Expect marginal to IFR conditions from Kodiak Island to the Alaska Peninsula and the Pribilof Islands with marginal conditions throughout the Aleutian Islands and the majority of the Bering Sea. Taking a look at our passes for tomorrow. Anik-Tuvik Pass will be marginal to begin with, becoming VFR. Same thing for Adigan Pass, marginal to begin with, becoming VFR. Moving on down to the Alaska Range, expect VFR conditions for Lake Clark as well as Merrill Pass. VFR conditions for Rainy Pass. VFR conditions as well for Windy Pass. One of the things to keep in mind like with Windy Pass in particular, with those gap winds, there's likely to be some turbulence there. Isabel Pass, expect VFR conditions tomorrow, potentially some windy conditions there as well. Mentasta Pass, marginal conditions becoming VFR as we progress through the day. Tanita Pass, expect VFR conditions there. Portage Pass, expect VFR conditions there. And then down into Chilkoot and White Pass, marginal to IFR conditions are what you should anticipate for tomorrow in that area. Taking a look at our freezing level over the state tomorrow. At the surface over the mainland, right around one to 2,000 feet over southeast Alaska at the surface over the Kodiak Island area. Across the Alaska Peninsula, uh, your freezing levels are gonna start to rise to around 1,000 feet over the Western, uh, Western Alaska Peninsula, as well as over much of the Aleutian Islands. Surface to about 1,000 feet is what you should expect. For our icing tomorrow, expect some isolated moderate rime icing from your freezing level to about 10,000 feet over the northern third of the Panhandle, as well as on the North Gulf Coast and into the eastern portions of Prince William Sound and also the eastern portions of the Copper River Basin over the Wrangell Islands in that eastern Alaska range. Also expect some uh, isolated moderate rime icing from your freezing level to about 13,000 feet over the central to western Alaska Peninsula over to the eastern Aleutian Islands and right on up into the central Bering Sea just south of the Pribilof Islands. Taking a look at our jet stream for tomorrow. Jet stream starting off at about 85 knots off northern Japan, 180 knots as it's come south of the uh, western Aleutian Islands to 140 knots south of the Alaska Peninsula. Then it takes a dive down south of the Gulf of Alaska, dropping off to 80 knots, and then accelerates to 125 knots as it makes landfall over that Vancouver Island area. Moving on down to that 9,000 foot level, expect basically 30 knot winds across the majority of southeast Alaska. 25 to 35 knot winds across the Gulf of Alaska and Kodiak Island, uh, 25 knot winds along the North Gulf Coast, light winds around 10 knots in the eastern interior with 10 to 15 knot winds over the eastern and Arctic coast, 20 to 25 knots over the northwest portions of the state, and then right around the Alaska Peninsula, about 15 to 25 knots across that region, 20 knots over the eastern Aleutian Islands, and then we expect about 15 to 20 knot winds, or 20 to 25 knot winds, excuse me, over the Aleutian Islands themselves, so with uh, stronger winds to about 20 to 30 knots south of the chain. Taking a look down at the 3,000 foot level. Southeast Alaska, expect about 25 to 30 knot winds off the coast uh, to about 15 knots as it moves over uh, and moves inland. Lighter winds along the North Gulf Coast as well as much of the South Central region and the Central Interior. 10 knot winds across the Eastern Brooks Range. Uh, 10 knot winds is basically across much of the uh, uh, Brooks Range, and this is again by tomorrow afternoon, so hence with the winds dropping off, that's why the wind chills are going to 
uh, come down uh, that wind chill advisory ends by tomorrow morning. 20 knot winds along the northern Arctic coast, about 50 knot winds right around that tightly wrapped low over the uh, central to western Alaska Peninsula, 25 knot winds over the top of the low with 40 knot winds over the central Aleutian Islands and expect about 25 knot winds over the Aleutian Islands as you move on further out to the west. Now in the Bering Sea here over the Pribilof Islands, looking like about 40 knot winds there, tapering off to about 25 knots as we get out now into the western Bering Sea. For our turbulence tomorrow, expect some turbulence over the Alaska Peninsula, some isolated moderate turbulence below a th about 3,000 feet. You may see some isolated turbulence also over the south central region wh where some of the gap winds, especially over the uh, uh, northern portions of the Susitna Valley. But that wraps up this portion of the show. Enjoy the segment and come back to the marine forecast. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mary O'Connor with the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation. I would like to say thank you to Alaska Public Media and to the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health for allowing me to bring you hangar flying today. This evening, we are happy to have Jenny Sandlin back on our show. Jenny is an air traffic controller at Anchorage Center and is part of the Alaska Region Safety Outreach Team. This evening, we are going to hear from Jenny about how she got started as an air traffic controller and about her job at Anchorage Center. Welcome back on the show, Jenny. Hi, Mary. Anchorage Center is pretty unique among the 21 air route traffic control centers in the United States. Anchorage has more military airspace than any other and also includes at least 33 active volcanoes. So you're an air traffic control specialist at Anchorage Center. This is also an oceanic center. There's a lot going on. Can you tell us what you do in your job? Where to start, Mary? <laughs> um, gosh, it, Anchorage Center is unique. Uh, it is not like any other center out there. Um, I work one of three different specialties. Um, it's called the North Area, but it's not really north. It's north and it's west and it's south. Um, we've got almost 400 airports that we control the approaches into. Um, so that alone is just very different from any other center out there. Um, <laughs> what how can far I west? Say? How far west and north do you go? So my airspace starts uh, basically point at uh, Mount McKinley and goes all the way to the North Pole. I speak with Canadian controllers on the right. I speak with Russian controllers on the left. Um, uh, Reykjavik, Iceland, on the north side, and it's huge. Some of our sectors are 1,200, 1,300 miles long. Um, it's a huge amount of airspace. That is huge. It is. How long have you been doing this? I started ATC. I actually have a terminal background. I started at Merrill um, 19 years ago. And so a few years at Merrill, uh, a few years at Anchorage Tower, and I went center uh, about 12 years ago. Um, started with the FAA um, in 93 as their Russian interpreter. And then I did that for about three, four years before I went ATC. Oh, wow. So. And how did you get interested in air traffic control? Well, it, working as a Russian interpreter, uh, we got all our routes established with Russia, and then they, I was doing airspace studies with no ATC background, so they just kind of came to me and said, would you like to go ATC? <laughs> I really didn't know what it was. <laughs> so. Oh, wow. So you wouldn't have imagined that you'd be doing this job? I had no idea. I had no idea what it was and who these people were and what they did, no. But it sounds like a perfect fit. I love it. I love it. It's the best job out there. Have you worked anywhere besides Alaska? Uh, no, just military. It was military out of high school in Germany, and that's where I learned my Russian. And so once I got out of the military, came to Alaska and started right up with the FAA. And what brought you to Alaska? Uh, marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, <laughs> that'll do it. <laughs> um, so back to controllers, they have a mandatory retirement age. So mm -hmm. you can't do this as much as you enjoy this job. You can't do it no. um, for necessarily as long as you might like to. Um, so what is this age and what options exist for controllers when um, they're forced to move on? on? That. Um, well, so we can retire at uh, after 20 years of, we call it good time, good ATC time, uh, if you're age 50. 
Okay. Otherwise, you can retire at 25 years of service at any age. Um, the mandatory retirement is age 56. So um, at age 56, you need to have progressed into a, either a management spot or a staff position, something that is not requiring currency on the floor. So. Okay, so currency on the floor is the only one that has the real age limit. It is. It's, it's, the, it's the controllers and it's the supervisors out there on the floor. Yes, they have to at least maintain a, um, a familiarity proficiency out there on the floor. Okay, so then all management positions are filled by people pretty much that have had their, their tw at least a minimum of 20 years in controlling traffic. Not necessarily, and that's changed a lot over recent years actually, but um, so no, there's, there's, there's plenty of folks that progress into the management ranks at earlier ages. And can you tell us quickly, what's the best part of the job? Quickly, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, gosh, you know, I love talking to the pilots. I love providing the service. I love um, giving them all the necessary information that I can to, to make good decisions, to make their job easier. Um, there's nothing bad about the job. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Jenny. We really appreciate being able to put a name to a voice um, for us pilots out there that's really helpful. And we appreciate you coming on the show and sharing a bit about your job and what you do. Thanks, Mary. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope you've learned a little bit about some of the people that work to keep the skies over Alaska safe. Thank you for watching Hangar Flying, and until next time, fly safely. Welcome back, and now we'll take a look at our ice edge uh, today. Basically, it hasn't really changed much since yesterday, and the ice edge is right about 50 miles north of the Pribloff Islands there. Expect it to come a little bit south over the next uh, day or two, basically but the sea surface temperature conditions, uh, really we're not expecting it to get down to the Pribloff Islands at all. Taking a look now at our marine forecast for southeast Alaska for Saturday. South winds 15 to 20 knots from the central panhandle right on up into the Lynn Canal Glacier Bay area. Southern panhandle west to northwest winds 20 knots. West winds 20 to 25 knots in the southern outside waters. West to southwest winds 25 knots as we move on up towards the east Gulf Coast. Taking a look at the area for Sunday, expect the winds to become somewhat light and variable over the uh, northern panhandle up through the uh, Lynn Canal Glacier Bay area. South to southeast winds about 20 knots in the southern inside waters. And southeast winds, th and these winds are going to be increasing during the day, so really expecting these stronger winds not until the evening on Sunday. During the day, they'll be much lighter. 30 to 35 knot winds in the southern outside waters, 40 to 45 knots as you get on up towards the east Gulf Coast. And again, this will be very late in the day, more towards the evening hours. Most of the day, it'll be uh, considerably lighter. For the south central region on Saturday, Prince William Sound and along the north Gulf Coast, that west to northwest wind flow continues, those strong gap winds in the western portions of the sound. Uh, 30, uh, 25 to 30 knot winds, but expect channeled areas to see winds of 40 to 50 knots at least during the day Saturday. Cook Inlet, northeast winds to north winds 25 knots, north to northwest winds from the Augustine area down through the Barrens at 30 knots. Winds are going to become uh, northeasterly, increasing to 35 knots late in the day Saturday. Uh, down through the Shilakoff Strait area, northwest winds most of the day, but then by late in the day, northeast winds and uh, increasing to 45 knots overnight Saturday night. Sunday, you can see how strong these winds are going to be as that next system is coming up. Northeast winds 50 knots from Calgan Island south uh, west across the uh, Augustine area down through Shelikov Strait, 25 knot northeast leaves in the northern inlet. Winds out of the east, southeast 30 knots south of the and e of the eastern Barren, uh, south and east of the Barren Islands and south of Kodiak Island. East winds 40 knots along the North Gulf Coast as well as into Prince William Sound. For the Alaska Peninsula on Saturday, expect your winds to be out of the east southeast 35 knots on the south side of the peninsula, northeast 35 to 40 knots on the north side of the peninsula up into Bristol Bay. Taking a look at the area for Sunday, northeast winds persisting at 35 knots from Bristol Bay down to the uh, north side of the peninsula. South uh, to east, southeast to east, east winds 30 knots on the south side of the peninsula. 
for the Aleutian Islands. Expect your winds to be out of the northeast 35 to 40 knots over the eastern Aleutian Islands, then north to northwest as we move on out towards ADAC, the ADAC area, about 25 to uh, 30 knot winds, tapering off to 20 knots towards ADAC. Northwest winds 25 to 30 knots over the western Aleutian Islands. On Sunday, expect your winds out of the north 35 knots, 25 to 35 knots over the eastern Aleutian Islands. Northeast 25 to uh, to 30 knots over the central Aleutian Islands and northeast winds 30 knots out into the western Aleutian Islands. For the Bering Sea coastal waters, northeast winds about 35 knots from Nunavak Island down to the Pribloff Islands. East winds 30 knots in the St. Matthew Island area with northeast winds 15 knots in the St. Lawrence Island region. 20 knot northeasterly winds in St. Lawrence Island, northeast winds 35 knots in the Nunavak Island waters and north winds 30 to 35 knots from St. Matthew Island down to the Pribloff Islands. For the Arctic coastal waters outside Cotsview Sound, expect your winds uh, to only be about 10 knots from outside of Cotsview Sound to Cape Lisburn, 15 knot winds out of the west as we move on over towards Barrow, and then 20 knot westerly winds basically from Prudhoe Bay east towards Kaktovik. Taking a look at the area for Sunday, west winds 20 knots from Barrow east to the uh, Kaktovik area. Expect your winds out of the southeast 10 to 15 knots along the western Arctic coastal area with winds out of the east. 15 knots outside of Cotsview Sound. For tonight, remember we do have the wind chill uh, advisories for the Eastern Brooks Range as well as the along the north uh, slopes of the Alaska Range. Wind chills to 50 below. Wind chills to 50 below into the evening hours over the Seward Peninsula as well. We're expecting upwards of about 12 inches of snow to fall by tomorrow afternoon along the North Gulf Coast, particularly into the Yakutat area. Out into the Aleutian Islands uh, in the Dutch Harbor area, they have been experiencing some snow with blowing snow. Same thing in the Pribloff Islands, reducing visibilities down below a mile at times. A mixture of rain and snow showers along the central Aleutian Islands on out into the western Aleutian Islands. And then into the Cook Inlet region, still expect the windy cool conditions with those outflow type gap winds. We're out of time for the show this evening. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.